the evolution of the church. I remember when a football shake folded note passed between palms and between classes and during class was an adrenaline rush held in silence with anticipation anxiously racing through my mind. All of this just to know what was written on the inside. I remember when handwritten letters made my heart race in 400 meter hurdle dashes, sending a platoon of butterflies to my stomach the way to my heart was through pencil tiny cursive paragraphs that spread across blue lines. This was all I cared for in my teenage years, or some of all that I cared for in my teenage years. It was, it was the little things. I remember the dashes and analog devices, pagers to be exact. We used telephones to tell someone to call us back, a backwards concept, but still, it was the cool thing to do. We spelled words with numbers. Codes camouflaged on green or gray rectangular screens. If your beaver read 143, that could mean just about anything. And again, it was the little things. I remember when I got my first cell phone. All I cared about was the accessories, call waiting, and being able to talk to my friends without my parents yelling, Stephanie, get off the phone! <laughs> If you know the struggle of C9 typing, then you know that this could take forever. And if you were to miss your letter, we well, kind of should just give up and call that person because that frustration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Text messages will never replace feeling the grooves of manuscript pressed against paper. There's something about that texture that feels more genuine than hiding behind icons, emojis, and acronyms as our new common gestures, the new age hieroglyphics, the new way in which we speak on behalf of our emotions. No one has let a stone beat it to decipher our animated messages. We use memes made with more grammatical errors than our eyes should give ganders to, but 619 shares later, the world passes this through the internet ways as if surfing came second nature. I remember when there was no autocorrect or backspace. Pen is and was so permanent. If you were to mess up, you'd have black holes all over your page. Ink-filled craters from scratching out those mistakes. Now we love with our smartphones, this fight with our Facebook accounts, and give silent treatment over Wi-Fi. We're so disconnected yet still plugged into a matrix, traveling over a wavelength of networks, and the only way we know how to be social is by using our Androids and iPhones to tweet about it, or Snapchat about it, or Instagram about it. We don't live in the moment anymore. I guess there's an art to this communication. A metaphor in the medium that created this platform for us to forget that organic feeling of receiving letters from loved ones. The sound of unfolding loose leaf from envelopes set with love tucked in its folds sound way better than the sound that comes from unlocking your phone. That feeling of paper in between fingers, that vibration of tone and reading penmanship feels way better than holding a gadget that basically types for us. Yeah. This digital generation can't even communicate over lunchtime without being a slave to a screen and I do the exact same thing. We've let technology simplify things but complicate our relationships. Text is so easily taken out of context with monotone dialogue. Sentences aren't even complete anymore when punctuation is as rare as unicorns. Misspelling is more common and on purpose as if the dictionary doesn't even exist. And I can't even make any sense from this. So it's time to unplug. And rewind back to the time to feel that adrenaline rush that came from folded up letters passed through the hands that took the time to scribe a message and just put the phone down so we can remember how, how to converse again without using a keyboard. Thank you.